Hey everyone, this is Andrew Weber, owner and operator of MyCreditCounselor.net, and today I'd like to talk a little bit about the National Collegiate Student Loan Trust, everyone's favorite private student loan lender. So the NCT has been in the news a lot lately. A lot of people do have loans with them. I think they're probably the second or third largest private student loan lender out there. But they're never your original lender. They're never the lender that gave you the loans in the first place to go to school. What the National Collegiate Trust does is buy up, they, they buy up portfolios of other lenders who are, are either getting out of the business or they're selling off parts of their portfolio. And a lot of these lenders got into the business kind of in the, the peak economic boom prior to the recession. The private student loan business was absolutely booming. But once the recession hit, it really consolidated the market and a lot of these lenders went out of business and sold their portfolios off to other um, basically aggregators like the National Collegiate Trust is. So the National Collegiate Trust is an actual set of, of loan trusts. They're, they're not an actual company. So I, I talk about this in one of my blogs. If you try to look up the phone number for the National Collegiate Trust online, you're not going to find it because they're not a real company. They're a set of trusts. They're owned by another company, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but there's no actual customer service number for the National Collegiate Trust because it is a set of loan trusts. So ironically, uh, since there is not much information out there about the National Collegiate Trust they're putting out themselves as far as phone numbers and you know places that you can contact, customer support, I have a, a few articles that are uh, ranking on, on search terms for the National Collegiate Trust, whether I've done them uh, on my website or collaborated with other people like Michael Bovey at CRN. And sometimes people will call the phone number listed on those articles, which either goes to me or to Michael's website, and they think that they're calling the National Collegiate Trust. Um, I, I'm not the National Collegiate Trust, guys. Please don't yell at me. I'm, I'm not garnishing your wages. Um, I do want to give you advice, and I do want to negotiate your private student loans with the National Collegiate Trust, but I'm not involved with them in any way. But since there's this kind of void in information out there as far as contact info and basically a company profile for the NCT, people see my blog articles or my interviews and they call the phone number that's, that's on that without really reading too far through it, thinking that they're calling the NCT because that's the first phone number that popped up in a Google search. Well, the National Collegiate Student Loan Trust is actually owned by a company called Goal Structured Solutions. They're a private equity company based out of San Diego, California. And there's another subsidiary involved called Turnstile Capital Management. These two companies are very closely related. So these are the two companies that are involved in the ownership of these National Collegiate Student Loan Trusts. And if you dig deep enough through a Google search, you will find a customer service phone number for Goal Structured Solutions and Turnstile Capital Management. So my negotiation method boils down to three main parts. Strategy, relationships, and experience. So with a company like the National Collegiate Trust, I have built up some contacts with collection managers, uh, collection uh, agency directors, and also a couple of people that are actually working for Turnstile Capital Management uh, that are kind of in a, a different uh, area than, than most borrowers are going to be able to, to, to get in contact with. So one of these people is an operations analyst for the Turnstile Capital Management company. And when I have to communicate with this person, they send me a login for an encrypted email server that I have to get onto and create a, a username and account just to email with them. So the National Collegiate Trust and their associated companies are very much a clandestine operation in many ways. They don't really want their practices to come to light. Uh, I'm sure they're definitely not thrilled with all the news articles that have come out recently. But they're trying to, to really, as much as they can, keep the involvement of the two uh, owning companies or the, the owning company and the subsidiary uh, outside of the limelight. They just want people to basically deal with their main loan servicer, AES, or if the loans are defaulted, then you can call the collection agency. They don't really want you to be talking to Turnstile Capital Management or even to really know about them or their involvement. Um, so it is, it is a big problem that just adds to the confusion. It adds to the lack of information when people are trying to find a solution to their specific loan problem. So what's the typical life cycle of a National Collegiate Trust private student loan? Um, it begins before the NCT was even involved, right? So it's going to start with a lender like maybe Chase, Bank of America, 
um, any number of other obscure lenders who have since gone out of business and sold their portfolio to the NCT. So that's when the NCT becomes involved. They, they purchase the loans from another lender. This is also where they get in a lot of trouble because especially for some of their older loans, they do not always get all of the proper documentation that they need to prove that they own the loan. So a lot of good student loan attorneys have just been kicking their butts in court when they sue a borrower because they can't provide that documentation. So in, in my experience, they've always been able to provide the main form of documentation, the master promissory note from the original lender. I've had plenty of clients who have asked for that in the course of negotiations with the NCT, knowing that the NCT has gotten in this, this kind of trouble before with not providing loan documents. So in my personal experience, they always can provide the master promissory note. It's the other uh, paperwork they cannot always provide, like a bill of sale, SEC documentation, the stuff that's involved when a company is buying securitized loans from another company. And this is also, in my opinion, why the National Collegiate Trust is probably the most similar example to the kinds of, of mortgage uh, securitization uh, companies and, and portfolios that contributed in large part to the, the Great Recession of 28, uh, to 2008. Um, so, the National Collegiate Trust has taken on a lot of these practices that look very similar to what the mortgage companies were doing and what other companies, what private equity companies were doing with the securitization of mortgage assets. And I've just really gone down the rabbit hole with some of these National Collegiate Student Loan uh, Trust loans and trying to just track the paper trail and trying to track how many entities it's been sold to along the way. Um, there was one I remember where the loan had been bought by UBS, which I believe is a Swiss uh, equity company in Switzerland, and it had been sold and packaged up, sold to somebody else. There was a long chain of companies that were involved in the ownership of this student loan. And it's highly unlikely that, that, that they were able to provide all of the loan documentation that proved they owned the loan from the beginning to the end of that process. So that's a big problem with a lot of National Collegiate Student Loan Trust, private student loans. Um, if they're buying a, a set of portfolios or loans from a, a company like Bank of America or Chase, there's probably not gonna be a lot of different entities involved along the way, but they still may not have all the documentation they need to prove that the loans uh, are owned by them. So it's really hit or miss, and you've gotta wait until they sue you to even have a chance of trying to make them prove that and the reason for that is under the FDCPA, the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, the threshold for validation or verification of a debt is, is very low. It's very easy for lenders and debt collectors to meet. It's just a copy of the promissory note or something even simpler than that. It can be kind of a, a balance sheet. But if you look into that, that statute, it really is, is pretty simple for lenders and debt collectors to meet the requirements of validation under the FDCPA. So you're not gonna get the SEC bill of sale and all these other documents they may not have or force them to try to provide those documents with a, a dispute process or an FDCPA validation request that's outside of litigation. You need a good student loan attorney who is going to force the other side, the other uh, collection attorney to provide those documents from the NCT during the discovery process of a lawsuit. So unfortunately, you've got to wait until they sue you and then it's really hit or miss. But a lot of good student loan attorneys have great success with, um, with defending those kind of lawsuits. At, in, in the best case scenario, they're going to get the whole thing dismissed. Of course, it's still going to reflect on your credit report at that point. It's not going to cancel the loan. It's just going to stop them from legally coming after you. They can still report it for seven years from the date of the default and that can still drag down your credit. Worst case scenario, um, they can still settle but you don't need to wait until you get sued to settle. So that, that's what I do. I negotiate settlements on private student loans prior to a lawsuit. A lot of people just don't wanna go through the trouble. Um, they don't wanna take the risk that uh, the NCT can't provide those documents. They don't wanna to have to pay an attorney a lot of money up front, which you know all attorneys are gonna charge a pretty good size uh, legal retainer. But at the same time, if you are facing a lawsuit, it's absolutely worth it to hire a good student loan attorney. So that's a little bit more about how the National Collegiate Trust becomes involved with these loans and how it plays out through the end of the cycle as far as uh, their, their final 
stage of collection, you know, which is which is litigation. And they, they will sue people. They've got a great reputation for being very litigious, uh, for filing a lot of lawsuits. But what I've seen recently in the last year or so is that they're not going after that right away. They're not um, attacking people legally right after the default, which some other lenders will do. Navient will definitely do that on, on larger accounts. You could be facing a collection attorney immediately after it defaults in some cases. What the National Collegiate Trust is going to do, from what I've seen recently, is they're going to, first of all, it's going to be with AES or another loan servicer. Usually AES is their main servicer. While you're current, it's going to take 180 days or six months to default. Once it defaults, or even prior to that, um, the, the default taking place, some collection agencies can become involved. And, and we've actually seen uh, an agency called Sim Associates. They're not a, a law firm, but it, they're called Sim Associates. They're up in the Northeast somewhere. They're, they're sometimes involved in the National Collegiate Trust private student loans before they even default. So the loans will either be with AES until the six months uh, passes, six months of missed payments, or it could go to Sim Associates when you're three or four months into default or into um, a delinquency prior to default. And Sim Associates are just going to call you. They're going to you know try to collect on it. You're not going to be able to settle with them whatsoever. And then once it does default, there's the primary collection assignment. And that's going to be the first company that gets the loan that's collecting on it. Typically, this is uh, Transworld Systems, uh, National Enterprise Systems. There's a couple other companies that are going to take that the, uh, the NCT loans on as the primary uh, collection assignment. And what I've seen is that they're not going to settle for less than maybe 70 or 80 percent of the balance during this initial primary collection assignment. The big change that I've seen though in the last year is that the amount of time that the loans are staying with the initial uh, collection placement is much longer than it used to be. So in the past, in 2017, 2016, uh, and before that, the National Collegiate Trust private student loans would uh, sit with the, the initial placement for maybe a few months, two or three months, and then go to the secondary placement. The secondary placement has historically been where I can get a settlement down to 50 or 55 percent. We just are not seeing settlements below 50 percent on National Collegiate Trust student loans that are not more than or that are not at least you know three or four years past due. And by that time a lot of interest has accrued and they probably were going to go for a lawsuit if it's a decent sized loan. So what we're seeing now is that this primary collection assignment can stretch on for five, six months or more. My most recent National Collegiate Trust uh, settlement took eight months after the default for us to negotiate it. And it was you know months prior to that of negotiating, but eight months to finalize the settlement for it to go from the primary collection assignment to the secondary uh, collection assignment. So the third collection assignment is probably going to be to a law firm or a company like Weltman, Weinberg & Reese, uh, based here uh, in Ohio, that does a lot of legal collections in the Midwest and a lot of non-legal collections across the country. Although they do have networks of attorneys they will uh, assign their, their accounts to for, for litigation. So that's typically the um, either the second or third placement. A lot of times if you see a loan that goes to WWR, it doesn't mean they're going to sue you right away. They can, and you probably need a professional to look at your situation, evaluate that, and make sure that they're not going to try to, to do that. But a lot of people are going to experience uh, collection efforts from Wilton, Weinberg, and Reese. They're a huge company, and the National Collegiate Trust works with them quite a bit. So the secondary placement is where we usually settle. So we're kind of trying to settle between the initial placement where they're going to hold out and another placement down the road, the third placement, where they're going to try to, to file a lawsuit. And if they, if they have the capability to file a lawsuit, they may not settle for less than 60 or 70 percent. So there's this kind of sweet spot in the collection cycle where we're looking to get these settlements done at 50 or 55 percent of the balance. And they will do structured settlements, usually at 55 percent or 60 percent. Um, so that's really the best case scenario with a National Collegiate Trust private student loan that's in default, uh, at least a recent default. The ones that have been in default for maybe three or four years or more, I can get those down usually to 40%. My lowest is, is 37% on those. They're not going to go much lower than that on a, an older account. On the newer charge-offs, they're, they're probably not going to go below 50%. 50% is a great settlement on a recently defaulted uh, NCT account. 
So that's a little bit more about the NCT uh, Private Student Loan Trust and the companies that are involved with them, whether it's collection agencies or their, uh, the companies that own them. Um, if you have a National Collegiate Trust Private Student Loan and you want to settle it, contact me today. My website is mycreditcounselor.net. My phone number is 937-503-4680. Again, that's 937-503-4680. We do have a, an evaluation form on our website that lets you put in a lot of information about your situation so we can really see if you're a good fit for the service or not. Again, we, we are a private student loan negotiation company. We never charge upfront fees. And uh, this was a video about the National Collegiate Trust private student loans. Hopefully you guys have learned something today. If you've got the NCT uh, private student loan, uh, if you've got NCT private student loan issues, please give me a call, 937-503-4680. Uh,